University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. So far, we've seen St John's College, Cambridge and Merton College, Oxford take the first two places in the semi-finals of this competition. Both teams playing the Cambridge Derby tonight lost their first quarter-final matches, which means the winners will earn themselves one last chance to qualify, while the losers will clamber into their canoe to paddle across the Slough of Despond, and we shall see them no more. <laughs> now, the team from Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge, notched up two solid wins earlier against Leicester University with 200 points to 105 and Magdalen College, Oxford, with 200 points again to 155. The wheels came off, though, during their first quarter-final match against Merton College, Oxford, which left them trailing 270 points to 125 points. With a timely opportunity to recover their earlier form, an accumulated score of 525 and an average age of 20, let's meet the Fitzwilliam team for the fourth time. Hi, I'm Theo Tyndall. I'm from Backwell near Bristol, and I'm studying Russian and Arabic. Hi, I'm Theo Howe. I'm from Forest Hill in Oxfordshire, and I'm reading Japanese studies. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Hugh Oxlade. I'm from South Woodford in North East London, and I'm reading history. Hello, I'm Jack Maloney. I'm from Harperton in Hertfordshire, and I'm reading medicine. Now, Emmanuel College, Cambridge, lost their first quarter-final match by 110 points to the 125 of the University of Edinburgh, but their earlier wins were against St Hugh's College, Oxford, in round one by 170 to 155, and Strathclyde University by 170 to 105 in round two. With an accumulated score of 450 and an average age of 19, let's meet the Emmanuel team again. Hi, I'm Ed Darby. I'm from Manchester and I study physics. Hello, I'm Kitty Chevalier. I'm from Hampshire and I'm studying Arabic and Hindi. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Alex Mislin. I'm from Islington in North London and I'm studying politics and international relations. Hi, I'm James Fraser. I'm from Bristol and I'm reading medicine. <laughs> OK, straight into the first starter question. Fingers on the buzzers, please. Give both answers promptly. On August the 30th, 1889, which two authors did the US publisher Joseph Marshall Stoddart invite to dinner at the Langham Hotel? The meeting resulted in the commission of two books for Lippincott's magazine, The Sign of Four and The Picture of Dorian Gray. Emmanuel Chevalier. Arthur Conan Doyle and Oscar Wilde. Correct. Your bonuses are on specific works that have been cited in support of the award of the Nobel Prize in Literature. In each case, give the author and the decade of the award. For example, the Foresight Saga would give John Galsworthy the 1930s. Firstly, Buddenbrooks, described by the Nobel Committee as one of the classic works of contemporary literature. Yes, Thomas Mann. Yes, Thomas Mann. I think it might have been... 40s or 50s? 1940s. Or it I think they're only so 40s. 1940s. 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 Thomas Mann, 1940s? No, it's Thomas Mann in the 1920s. <laughs> Secondly, the history of Rome, described as the monumental work of the greatest living master of the art of historical writing. I don't know. It's not like one of the classic historians. Sorry, I haven't given no. Um, no, but it's a Nobel Prize, so like Taylor. Taylor, like, 1950s. Taylor, 1950s. It was Theodore Mommsen in the 1900s and finally cited for its mastery of the art of narrative, The Old Man and the Sea. So it's Hemingway. Hemingway, 19, I think it was 50s. Hemingway, 1950s. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. In physics, what seven-letter term is used of collisions in which the total kinetic energy is conserved? Emmanuel Darby. Elastic. Elastic is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on US presidents and England international footballers. <laughs> Firstly, what surname links the 28th US president inaugurated in the early 20th century with England's left back in the 1966 World Cup final? Um, yeah, it could be, actually. Or it could be... Um, Wilson. Wilson is correct. Woodrow Wilson and Ray Wilson. 
Secondly, the second given name of a post-war president, what is the surname of the England left back who played in two matches during the 2014 World Cup finals? Um, so it's Shaw, isn't it? Is that... The second given name, is it the like, middle name? Kind of thing? I don't Shaw, sure, possibly, or like... Uh, Baines? Baines is correct, yes. Linda Baines Johnson and Leighton Baines. And finally, a more recent president has what second given name, which is also the surname of an England right back who played three times at the European Championships in 2016? Walker. Walker is correct. <laughs> Kyle and George Walker Bush. Ten points for this. Geoffrey Chaucer wrote his early poem, The Book of the Duchess, in memory of the wife of which royal figure whose patronage Chaucer enjoyed? The father of King Henry IV. He's often known by an epithet denoting the Flemish city of his birth. Fitzwilliam Oxlade. Uh, John of Gaunt. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on geneticists, uh, Fitzwilliam. The work of which two US scientists in the Neurospora crassa mould led to the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis? They shared the 1958 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. Have you got anything on genetics at all? Yes, absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, let's not waste time, then. No. We don't know. It's Beadle and Tatum. <laughs> Secondly, which US geneticist publicly derided chromosome theory for the lack of experimental evidence and subsequently discovered sex-linked inheritance in fruit flies? He won the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1933. Uh, yeah, he's, um, he's big. <laughs> Oh, no, nothing. Pregnant. No, sorry again. <laughs> That's Morgan, uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan. And finally, which US geneticist pointed out in 1902 that chromosomes obey Mendel's rules? He thus provided the basis for the chromosome theory of heredity, independently of the German cytologist Thomas Bovary. <laughs> no, we don't know that either. That's Walter Sutton. <laughs> Right, we're going to take a picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see an outline map of Europe with a number of cities marked. Ten points if you can give me the final letter that all their names share. Fitzwilliam Maloney. Z. Z is correct, yes. Cadiz, Biarritz, Koblenz, Grads and Lods. Right, your picture bonus is three more maps of Europe. Again, in each case, simply tell me the final letter common to the English names of all the cities marked. Firstly for five... Halifax, Bordeaux. X. X is correct. Halifax, Bordeaux, Montreux, and Chamonix. Secondly, V. V is correct. Kiev, uh, Lviv, and Kharkiv. And finally, uh, W. W. Yeah, because yeah, Moscow. Yeah. W. W. Glasgow, Warsaw, and so on. Right. Ten points for this. <laughs> Which three successive letters of the alphabet follow the letters A-L? The first in a word meaning the height of an aircraft above sea level. The second naming a metal... It's William Maloney. T-U-V. T-U-V is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on figures of speech with reference to the Monty Python dead parrot sketch. <laughs> Firstly, for five points, which expression in the dead parrot sketch includes an alternative common name of the aster or composite family of plants. Um, the pine, yeah. pining, oh, pining, pining for the fjords? No, it's pushing up the daisies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, the expression join the choir invisible appears in the title of an 1867 poem by which author? Her novels include Daniel Deronda and Felix Holt the George Radical. Eliot. George Eliot. Correct. The expression shuffle off this mortal coil appears in Act 3 of which of Shakespeare's tragedies? Hamlet. Correct. Ten points for this. The orthography of which romance language includes a dot known as a punt volat or flown point? Similar in form to a decimal point, it occurs between two letter L's to indicate a specific pronunciation. The language is the sole official language of Andorra. Fitzwilliam Maloney. Catalan. Catalan is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on Angevin, Queens of England. Firstly, in 1191, Berengaria of Navarre married which king? After their wedding in Cyprus, she accompanied him to Palestine during the Third Crusade. Richard Coeur de Lyon. Correct. <laughs> 
Married to King John when she was 12 years old, which Angevin queen effectively abandoned her children on her husband's death to take up her inheritance in France? Isabella of Angoulême. Correct. Which Queen of France and later England was the mother-in-law of both Berengaria of Navarre and Isabella of Angoulême? Oh, is this going to be Eleanor of Aquitaine? <laughs> if, if you want to. No, no. Eleanor of Aquitaine? Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> In medicine, what term denotes an inadequate blood supply to a part of the body, for example, the heart? An adjectival form of the term appears in the abbreviation T-I-A. Uh, Emmanuel Fraser. Ischemia. Ischemia is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on Icarus, the son of Daedalus in Greek mythology. Firstly, portraying the death of Icarus only as an incidental detail, the 16th century painting Landscape with the Fall of Icarus has generally been attributed to which Flemish artist? Peter Bruegel the Elder. Correct. In his 1947 book, Jazz, which French artist portrayed Icarus as a simple black form against a royal blue background? Matisse. 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 Matisse is right. I'm not the first or the last to stand on a hillock watching the man she married prove to the world he's a total, utter, absolute grade-A pillock. Which poet wrote those lines reflecting on the myth of Icarus? Caroline Duffy. Correct. <laughs> yes, right. right, ten points for this. Treatise on Instrumentation and Orchestration was an influential work of 1844 by which French composer? His works include the comic opera Beatrice and Benedict, the Grand Messe des Morts, and the symphony Harold in Italy. Uh, Emmanuel Fraser. Berlioz. Berlioz is correct. <laughs> You get a set of bonuses on astrophysics, Emmanuel. Which German physicist solved Einstein's equations of general relativity for a spherically symmetric mass distribution? In doing so, he predicted the existence of black holes. Schwarzschild. Nominate Darby. Schwarzschild. Yes, Karl Schwarzschild. The Schwarzschild radius measures the size of the event horizon of a non-rotating black hole. It's given what formula in terms of the gravitational constant g, the mass of the hole m, and the speed of light c? Um, do you have any idea? I think I can say. <laughs> g over m squared c times squared. by c. Nominate Darby. G over m squared times by c. No, it's 2gm over c squared. <laughs> and finally, therefore, how does the density of a black hole change if its mass increases by a factor of 10? I'm going to need a precise answer. It does. Oh, multi <laughs> inc multiplies by 100. Oh. Did, it, did it increase or decrease? In increase. So it it increases by a factor of 100. It may increase by a factor of 100. No, it falls by a factor oh, of 100. Oh. Right, 10 points for this. Listen carefully, I need two answers here. In the mnemonic... Karl Marx gave the proletariat 11 zeppelins, yo. If the words Karl Marx stand for kilo and mega, for what do the words 11 zeppelins stand? Fitzwilliam Tyndall. Uh, Zepta and Yotta. No, anyone want to buzz from Emmanuel? Uh, Emmanuel Fraser. Exa and Zepta. I can't accept that, it's Exa and Zeta. Right, ten points for this. Which novel by Charles Dickens begins with the death of a wealthy shipping merchant's wife after giving birth to their second... Fitzwilliam Tyndall. Is it Dombey and Son? It is Dombey and Son, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on literary bad feeling, Fitzwilliam. The US novelist and essayist Gore Vidal had a long-standing feud with which fellow author? In 1971, he head-butted Vidal backstage during a recording of The Dick Cavett Show. Truman Capote. Uh, Truman Capote. No, it was Norman Mailer. Prompted oh, yes, Norman yes. Mailer to say, prompting Vidal to say, once again, words failed Norman Mailer. <laughs> Vidal also had a long standing feud with which author, born in 1924 in New Orleans, whom Vidal called a full fledged housewife from Kansas with all the prejudices? So this is Truman Capote, is it? Or is that too, too late for him? Wait, who did you think got this there? No, I was just saying half of it, but Truman Capote oh, wasn't yeah. enough. Let's try Truman Capote again. That was tr <laughs> Truman Capote, yes. Capote, in turn, condemned the jazz-influenced work of which US author and poet, saying of it, that's not writing, that's typing. Oh, right. 
Uh, Jack Kerouac. Correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. Ten points if you can give me the name of the band, please. Emmanuel Darby. You too. You too is correct. <laughs> they were named by the music critic Kelifer Sane as a band often liked by adherents to rockism, which is defined as the belief that white macho guitar music is superior to all other forms of popular music. Your music bonuses are three guitar solos of a similar ilk. Firstly, name this band, described in Rolling Stone magazine as hammering out one Herculean riff after another. ACDC? Or... ACDC? Correct. Secondly, identify this artist. The music critic Dave Marsh claimed his music should shake men's souls and make them question the direction of their lives. Jeff Beck. No, that's Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. And finally, who's this? A Telegraph article claimed that they weren't the greatest band of all time. They were even better than that. Good heavens, no. That's Led Zeppelin, the immortal stairway to heaven. So, ten points for this. Listen carefully, answer promptly. If the eight major planets of the solar system and the first eight elements of the periodic table are both arranged in ascending order of mass, which planet is matched with lithium? Fitzwilliam Maloney. Earth. Nope. Anyone want to buzz from Emmanuel? Emmanuel Fraser. Venus. Venus is correct, yes. Right. So you retake the lead. They're on anthropologists, your bonuses. Born in Scotland in 1854, which anthropologist was a prominent scholar of mythology and comparative religion? His most notable work is The Golden Bough. <laughs> Nominate Fraser. So James Fraser? <laughs> That's correct, yes. <laughs> Secondly, born in Philadelphia in 1901, which cultural anthropologist is noted for her work on adolescence in Southeast Asia and the South Pacific? Her publications include the much debated Coming of Age in Samoa. Is that Margaret Mead? Yeah, I thought there, she was there's, there's another one that I can't remember. She said Margaret Mead. Correct. Yeah. Born in 1908, which French anthropologist is noted for his development of the theory of structuralism? Is this Foucault? Mm -hmm. Should we tarot, I thought she said Foucault. Yeah. Foucault? That's Claude Levi Strauss. Ten points for this. Which decade saw the publication of Blaise Pascal's Provincial Letters, James Harrington's Commonwealth of Oceania, and Thomas Hobbes's Leviathan? The last. Emmanuel Mislin. 1640s. No, you lose five points. The last year of the decade saw the resignation of Richard Cromwell as Lord Protector of England. Fitzwilliam Oxley. Uh, 1650s. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses, Fitzwilliam, on the periodic table. The naming of element 106 caused controversy because the team that discovered it suggested the name should reflect that of which chemist who was still alive at the time? Well, it is Seagordian. Um, okay. Seagull, should we say? But did he say it's not? I think, he, he, I think they it's succeeded, here. didn't they? So okay. let's say Seaborg. Correct. Yeah. Also named after a scientist alive at the time, what are the names of elements numbers 99 and 100 discovered at the location of the first thermonuclear explosion in November 1952? It's Einstein and Fermi. Uh, do we need to name the elements, though? Oh, the elements. Einsteinium, fermium. Einsteinium and fermium. Correct. 
Give either the name of Element 118 or the surname of the living Russian nuclear physicist of Armenian descent after whom it was named in 2016. So uh, the element is Argoneson. Argoneson. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. The Anvil Chorus and the Soldiers Chorus feature in which... Fitzwilliam Tyndall. Um, I have Verdi Operas, but... <laughs> I'm afraid you lose five points. Featuring which opera first performed in Rome in 1853? Ah. Emmanuel Fraser. Il Trovatore. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on extinct Indo-European languages, Emmanuel College. Lydian, Palaic and Hittite are extinct languages given a collective name after which peninsula? It comprises a large part of present-day Turkey. Um... Anatoly, Anatolic languages? I'll accept that, yes. Anatolia is the name I was looking for for the peninsula. Tocharian A and B are attested by Buddhist texts from the first millennium of the Common Era. They were spoken in the Tarim Basin in which present-day country? Tarim Basin. India. India. No, they were in China. Sabine, Oscan and Volsian are extinct languages of which present-day European country? Italy? Do you reckon that's... Mm. I don't know, I'm just going on Sabine. Is that, is it like the same well, that's the one going on. Italy? It is Italy, yes. Right, we're going to take a second picture out now. For your picture start, you're going to see a still from a film. For ten points, I want you to identify the name of the film and the actor on the right who also directed it. Fitzwilliam Hall. Unforgiven and Clint Eastwood. Correct. <laughs> so he directed and starred in Unforgiven. Your bonuses are stills from three more films whose directors also acted in them. Each film is preserved in the National Film Registry of the US Library of Congress. Firstly, I want the full four-word title of this film and its director seen here on the left. This is Spinal Tap and Rob Reiner. Uh, this is Spinal Tap, Rob Reiner. Correct. Secondly, again, the title of the film and the name of the actor and director. Uh, is that Easy Rider? Like, Dennis. Dennis Hopper? Did he do it? Yeah. Possibly. Okay. Uh, Easy Rider and Dennis Hopper. Correct. And yes. finally, title yes. and actor director again. No. Modern Times Modern. and Charlie Chaplin. Uh, modern Times and Charlie Chaplin. Correct. Ten points for this. In English grammar, opinion, size, age, shape, colour, origin and material is the most usual order of what... Emmanuel Chevalier. Adjectives. Adjectives is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on the Messner version of the Seven Summits, that is, the highest mountains on each continent. In each case, name the peak from its geographical coordinates. Firstly, 63.07 degrees north, 151 degrees west. Is that Asia? Everest? No, that's Denali, McKinley in uh, North America. Secondly, 43.35 degrees north, 42.45 degrees east. Would that be Europe or Asia? Should we try Everest? Is this... Is this not Europe? So more people. What am I saying? Just Everest. Everest. No, it's Elbrus, Europe. <laughs> and finally, 78.53 degrees south, 85.62 degrees west. Is that a conquer goer? I think the tallest in South America is a conquer goer. A conquer goer? No, that's the Vincent Massif in Antarctica. There's three and a half minutes to go, and there's ten points for this. The history of King Richard III was written in the 1510s by which statesman? From 1518, he served on Henry VIII's Privy Council and later became Lord Chancellor. Fitzwilliam Oxlade. Uh, Thomas Cromwell. No, anyone like to buzz from Emmanuel? Uh, Emmanuel Mislin. Francis Bacon. No, it was Sir Thomas More. Ten points for this starter question. Talas, Jalal, Abad, Osh and Batken are among the oblasts or administrative regions of which Central Asian country? Fitzwilliam Tyndall. Uh, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on helium. The helium capital of the world is an epithet 
of which city in the Texas panhandle? Its name is the Spanish word for the colour yellow. Amarillo. Amarillo is correct. The United States produces a large proportion of the world's helium, recovering it from what other specific product? And I need a two-word answer. Oh, it's a byproduct of radioactive decay. Um, some sort of ore. Iron ore? No, it's natural gas. Uh -huh. The helium in natural gas comes from radioactive decay. What term denotes particles that are the nucleus of a helium-4 atom? Alpha particle. Uh, alpha particle? Correct. Ten points for this. I need a precise answer here. In the opening scene of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, what seven words precede, play on, give me excess of it? Emmanuel Chevalier. Music be the food of love. If music be the food of love is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on excursions. Who wrote the 1863 anthology, Excursions, a series of essays that includes a walk to Walchuset and natural history of Massachusetts? Mark Twain. That was Henry David Thoreau. The Steam Excursion is a short story by Charles Dickens that forms one of the so-called tales in which collection known by a three-word name? Pass. Their sketches by Boz, which 1974 novel by Beryl Bainbridge describes a series of darkly comic events that occur during the annual excursion of a glass manufacturing company? Pass. That's the bottle factory outing. Ten points for this. Kurikta is the Latin name for which island off the coast of Croatia? Noted for the discovery of the stone slab known as the Baksha tablet, it has a three-letter name that contains no vowels. It's William Hull. Tear. No Tear. anyone want to buzz from Emmanuel? Uh, Emmanuel Fraser. Liss. No, it's Crook. Ten points for this. Lan Chang, or Kingdom of the Million Elephants, was an early polity in which present-day country? It flourished from the 14th century until the 18th and later became part of French Indochina. Uh, Emmanuel Mislin. Thailand. No anyone would like to buzz from Fitzwilliam? Uh, Fitzwilliam Hull. Vietnam. No, it's Laos. Ten points for this. Rearranging the letters of the chemical formula for table salt gives what word? Meaning a large... Fitzwilliam Maloney. Clan. Clan is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses now are on perpendicular Gothic architecture. In each case, name the county in which the following churches are located. Firstly, Tattersall, Thirlby and Louth. Uh, Lancashire. John, Emmanuel College, Cambridge, have 150. Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge, have 175. Well, that was a great game, and it was very, very close, and you very nearly took it, Emmanuel. Who knows what would have happened if we'd gone on another few minutes? Who can say? But thank you very much for joining us. We're going to have to say goodbye to you. Fitzwilliam, congratulations. You get another chance to stay in the competition. So many congratulations to you. I hope you can join us next time. Uh, for another quarter final, but until then, it's goodbye from Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>